give benedictions to Prahlad Maharaj, Prahlad did not accept any material benediction and simply asked the favor of the Lord to remain his eternal devotee. In this connection, Prahlad Maharaj cited the example of Hanuman, the eternal servitor of Lord Ramachandra, who also set an example by never asking any material favor from the Lord. He always remained engaged in the Lord's service. That is the ideal character of Hanuman, for which he is still worshipped by all devotees. Prahlad Maharaj also offered his respectful obeisances unto Hanuman. There is a well-known verse spoken by Hanuman in which he says, My dear Lord, if you like, you can give me salvation from this material existence or the privilege of merging into your existence, but I do not wish any of these things. I do not want anything which diminishes my relationship with you as servant to master, even after liberation. In a similar passage in the Narada Pancharatra, it is stated, my dear Lord, I do not wish any perfectional stage by performing the ritualistic religious ceremonies or by economic development or by sense gratification or liberation. I simply pray that you grant me the favor of keeping me under your lotus feet. I do not wish any kind of liberation such as Salokya to reside on your planet or Sarupya to have the same bodily features as you. I simply pray for your favor that I may always be engaged in your loving service. Similarly, in the sixth canto, 14th chapter, verse 5 of Srimad Bhagavatam, Maharaj Parikshit inquires from Shukadeva Goswami, My dear Brahmana, I understand that the demon Vritrasra was a greedy, sinful person and that his mentality was completely absorbed in the modes of passion and ignorance. How did he develop to such a perfectional stage of devotional service to Narayana? I have heard that even great persons who have undergone severe austerities and who are liberated with full knowledge must strive to become devotees of the Lord. It is understood that such persons are very rare and almost never to be seen. So I am astonished that Vitrasura became such a great devotee. In the above verse, the most important thing to be noted is that there may be many liberated persons who have merged into the existence of the impersonal Brahman. But a devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayan, is very, very rare. Even out of millions of liberated persons, only one is fortunate enough to become a devotee. In Srimad Bhagavatam, 1st Kanto, 8th Chapter, verse 20, Queen Kunti is praying to Lord Krishna at the time of his departure. My dear Krishna, you are so great that you are inconceivable even to great stalwart scholars and paramahamsas, fully liberated souls. So if such great sages, who are transcendental to all the reactions of material existence, are unable to know you, then as far as we are concerned, belonging to the less intelligent woman class, how is it possible for us to know your glories? How can we understand you? In this verse, the particular thing to be noted is that the personality of Godhead is not understood by great liberated persons, but only by devotees such as Queen Kunti in her humbleness. Although she was a woman and considered less intelligent than a man, still she realized the glories of Krishna. That is the purport of this verse. Another passage which is very important is in Srimad Bhagavatam, 1st Kanto, 7th chapter, verse 10, and is called the Atma Rama verse. In this Atma Rama verse, it is stated that even those who are completely liberated from material contamination are attracted by the transcendental qualities of Lord Krishna. The purport of this verse is that a liberated soul has absolutely no desire at all for material enjoyment. He is wholly freed from all kinds of material desires, and yet he is irresistibly attracted by the desire to hear and understand the pastimes of the Lord. We may therefore conclude that the glories and pastimes of the Lord are not material. 
otherwise. How could the liberated persons known as Atmaramas be attracted by such pastimes? That is the important point in this verse. From the above statements, it is found that a devotee is not after any of the stages of liberation. There are five stages of liberation, already explained as being, one, to become one with the Lord, two, to live on the same planet as the Lord, three, to obtain the same bodily features as the Lord, four, to have the same opulences as the Lord, and five, to have constant association with the Lord. Out of these five liberated stages, the one which is known as Sayuja, or to merge into the existence of the Lord, is the last to be accepted by a devotee. The other four liberations, although not desired by devotees, are still not against the devotional ideals. Some of the liberated persons who have achieved these four stages of liberation may also develop affection for Krishna and be promoted to the Goloka Vrindavan planet in the spiritual sky. In other words, those who are already promoted to the Vaikuntha planets and who possess the four kinds of liberation may also sometimes develop affection for Krishna and become promoted to Krishna Loka. So those who are in the four liberated states may still be going through different stages of existence. In the beginning they may want the opulences of Krishna, but at the mature stage the dormant love for Krishna exhibited in Vrindavan becomes prominent in their hearts. As such, the pure devotees never accept the liberation of Sayuja to become one with the Supreme, although they may sometimes accept as favorable the other four liberated states. Out of many kinds of devotees of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the one who is attracted to the original form of the Lord, Krishna in Vrindavan, is considered to be the foremost first-class devotee. Such a devotee is never attracted by the opulences of Vaikuntha or even of Dvaraka, the royal city where Krishna ruled. The conclusion of Sri Rupa Goswami is that the devotees who are attracted by the pastimes of the Lord in Gokula or Vrindavan are the topmost devotees. Vrindavan is the transcendental place where Krishna enjoys his eternal pastimes as a boy, and it is considered the topmost sphere in all existence. When this Vrindavan is exhibited in the material world, the place is called Gokula, and in the spiritual world it is called Goloka, or Goloka Vrindavan. A devotee who is attached to a particular form of the Lord does not wish to redirect his devotion to other forms. For example, Hanuman, the devotee of Lord Ramachandra, knew that there is no difference between Lord Ramachandra and Lord Narayan. But still, he wanted to render service only unto Lord Ramachandra. That is due to the specific attraction of a particular devotee. There are many, many forms of the Lord, but Krishna is still the original form. Though all the categories, excuse me, though all the devotees of the different forms of the Lord are in the same category, still it is said that those who are devotees of Krishna are the topmost in the list of all devotees. So now I'd like to comment on this a little bit. Uh, the point in this long uh, chapter with many, many quotes from the scriptures mostly Srimad Bhagavatam, is that devotional service surpasses all kinds of liberation. And the proof that's offered in many, many quotes from the scripture is that even when the devotees are offered different kinds of liberation, they don't accept it. Uh, but what to speak of liberation, they don't even accept material benedictions from the Lord, uh, or they don't even want to change their uh, current situation. Uh, as long as they can offer devotional service to the Lord by hearing and chanting his glories, the devotees consider themselves perfectly satisfied. That is the point, that this devotional service is so satisfying to the soul that even when offered liberation, 
the devotees say, oh, no, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I don't need that. Uh, that's all right. I'll just continue to hear and chant about your glories. And by this process of devotional service, I'll remain completely satisfied. But we don't see this in the behavior of most people. Most people, if they are offered some promotion to a higher condition of life, uh, they immediately accept, oh, yes, yes, I'll take that check for a million dollars, or whatever it is. Uh, but we see here that the devotees are, even uh, when the Lord himself offering them, uh, they say, no, no, thank you. And it's very kind of you, but I really don't need that. <laughs> so try to understand the position of the pure devotee. Uh, the pure devotee is first.